I'm here with Zoe Clues, who's a hypnotherapist who specialises in anxiety and depression. And I wanted to ask her a bit about that and how it works and if she has any advice uh, to offer, because this is a very big subject. And um, I know that a, a lot of people are, a lot more people are suffering uh, from anxiety now uh, since the pandemic began. And a lot of people, their anxiety has got worse. Mm -hmm. So I should imagine you're pretty busy at the moment. Yes, yes, I am, I am. And, um, you know, I was really concerned beginning of lockdown, actually, about what this would do to anxiety and, you know, about um, people's mental health. And I've seen, as well as clients who've had anxiety before, I've, I've seen clients who've never had anxiety before. It's the first time they've experienced really? it. Yeah. yeah. No, well, it's not. I say really, but it's not surprising at all. Yeah. Well, it's a response, isn't yeah. it? This is the thing, you know, because anxiety is a is is a big topic. But I always say about anxiety, really, you can sort of it's either a response to your environment to what's going on. So, say you're in a really toxic situation at work, your boss is bullying you, for example. Your system, your body will give you feedback that this situation is no good for you. Yeah. By raising anxiety. And then also, um, so it's feedback, so anxiety is feedback. Then also anxiety um, is, if you have anxiety and you don't really know why, which a lot of people do, they don't know why they're anxious, just they know that they're anxious. It's got this awful anxious feeling in the pit of their stomach, in their chest. Yeah, for no, you know? for no rhyme yes. or reason. Which then makes it really, then they get cross yes. with themselves. Yes. Because they think, well, yes. I'm anxious, I don't need to be anxious. Um, but then when we judge ourselves, it makes us more anxious. Our nervous system can't tell the difference between us judging us and someone else judging us. Right. So when we, because when we get really angry with ourselves, when we get anxious, the amount of clients who are coming and listening to me, I'm just so frustrated and angry with myself that I'm anxious, and I don't ever make them make it, that's not gonna help at all. Because <laughs> yeah. you think about it, if your friend was anxious, and then you got angry with them for being yes, anxious, you know, wouldn't dream of we're doing so it. Hard yeah, we're so hard on ourselves. We're so mean to ourselves. We're so mean to ourselves. We do such a number. Um, so they don't know why they're anxious, and so then the reasons for that might be a long time ago. So they may have got, they may, I always say that, you know, we get anxious when we get full. So a lot of clients will come and see me. They don't really know why they're anxious. Um, Isn't that strange, though, that you have anxiety and that feeling in the pit of your stomach, mm. but you don't know why because you can't think of anything that's happened? Yeah, because it's, it's because it's old, because your subconscious is trying to communicate to you. There is something to resolve. So we always think of anxiety and depression as these terrible things that happen to us, but they are also often a sign from our subconscious, hey, look, there's something to resolve. So we might have gone through... Um, I talk about trauma, um, people think it means big things happening to you, but it also means it, trauma can be just be, can simply be, and it's huge, isn't just not getting the adequate love, affection and nurturing that you needed, or you didn't get your needs met as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, very, very common indeed. Right, so oh, this, really? Oh, yeah, very common. So your subconscious is just trying to get your attention, that there's things to resolve, maybe there's some old negative beliefs that could do with sort of re-looking at and updating the script. Maybe there's stuff, you know, some old heartbreaks you haven't cleared out of your system, you know, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. So it can be a, bit of a red flag from you to you, or a bit of a sign rather, that there's something that needs to be looked at. Let's look right. more underneath the anxiety. Here's the other thing about anxiety as well. Anxiety is a lid. So a lot of the time underneath anxiety, really there's grief, really there's rage, really there's sadness that hasn't been processed. So often when we work with anxiety, when we sort of look at what's actually underneath it, and we do that in a really compassionate, safe way, and often there's all sorts of emotions underneath it that just haven't been processed by the system. Wow, so yes. that's it's, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, lifting that lid. Yeah, very gently, checking the subconscious, it's saying, just acknowledge, yeah. just acknowledge. Often, a lot of the time, just acknowledging something with the subconscious can bring about such a shift. Yeah. Because something hasn't been acknowledged. Just, just acknowledging it and saying, okay, it's it's yeah, there. and It's here, and that was heartbreaking. Yes, yeah, that was yes. sad, or that was difficult. And, that must have been really difficult dealing with that on your own. You know, no yeah. one ever acknowledged it for that person. Yeah. They haven't acknowledged yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know, and acknowledging yeah. it can create, can cause a lot of relief in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing with anxiety as well is that we can go through a stressful event, you know, that we can mm -hmm. go through too much stress. So our system gets more anxious. We just, we don't know, we've run on empty for too right. long. We've just gone, gone, gone. We're all great at doing that, aren't we? Right, right, just, right. I'll just yeah. keep on going, just keep on going. Yeah. Yeah, so what, I feel a bit rubbish, but no, I'll just keep, oh, I haven't really slept. No, it's fine, I'll keep going, keep going, have more coffee, you know, whatever. And then we get stressed. Yeah. And that's one thing. Now, if we take ourselves out of the um, stressful situation, our stress levels will go back down, we hope. But what happens is then we start to worry. And I call this anxiety about the anxiety in medical terms. What I <laughs> came up with. It's anxiety about the anxiety. So then you start to get anxious about being anxious. 
So then you start to, and I see a lot of people for this, and this is when the anxiety becomes this real quicksand. So people really start to fight against the anxiety. But the harder you fight against anxiety, it's like, like I say, it's like quicksand, you start to struggle and you get stuck in it. So people get really worried about their anxious, anxious symptoms, if you like. Yeah. So they scan, they wake up in the morning and go, how do I feel? Or do I feel anxious? And they might have felt all right when they woke up, but they scan their body. Is my heart uh, doing this thing? Oh, and then they make themselves anxious yeah, by getting so worried that they're going exactly. to feel anxious. Exactly, the anxiety yeah. loop. And yeah. then they, what they might do with their mind, why well, am I having that strange thought? Why well, am I having this thought? What does this mean? It just means you're anxious, you know? Yeah. But So you get anxiety about the anxiety, and then you've got to do that. So what you have to do, and people will, and anxiety is very powerful on the body, you know? So people have all, sometimes people, doctors will send me people, and they've checked them for everything. Yeah. And they say, look, it's anxiety. It's, you, this is what's causing all these symptoms and they'll come and see me but they've gone for all sorts of medical checks they've got really worried about they've had ecgs because you know a lot of anxiety has a powerful yes, effect on the heart yes, and the yes. whole body so they'll be scanning their body for how their body feels and you know if we scan our body we'll always find something yeah, so, yeah. Know, this feels a bit awful so yeah. then you get obsessed you get obsessed with your own sim anxiety symptoms if you like so then you have to work with saying so what oh okay just that anxious feeling because it's like anything, if I said to you, don't think of a white bear, you think of a white bear, right? <laughs> so if you say to yourself, don't be anxious, you're going to be anxious. Yeah, or, or if you say to someone, calm down. I mean, yeah, you exactly. Know, nothing makes anyone not calm down, <laughs> more calm down. I know, but when has that ever worked in the Never. history of time? <laughs> Just calm down. Yeah. <laughs> like, how dare you tell me to yeah. calm down? Um, so, you know, that's anxiety is invariably one of these things going on. And um, do you think that um, anxiety... Is is where are you in the fight, uh, in, yes, in, flight. In, in in flight mode? Flight mode yes. when you're anxious. Yeah. And what is the difference? Is there a difference between mm -hmm. an anxiety attack and a panic attack? Would you say? Well, I guess a panic attack probably feels more. I mean, I've experienced anxiety attacks and panic attacks um, when I was younger. So, I remember the first time I had a panic attack. It was absolutely terrifying. She don't know what's happening. You know. So an anxiety attack, I would guess, you would feel more anxious, but panic is a bit more of a terrifying experience. Is it? So is it more of physical? I think so. Yeah, well, they're, they're both quite physical, but an anxiety attack, I just, I think, you know, the difference between the two, a panic attack is, is more powerful. So are they coming from different places? Are they different causes? No, I think, you know, I mean, it, it's all the nervous system, it's all adrenaline, your body mm. being flooded flood with adrenaline and cortisol. Um, but they are coming from the same places, yeah, it's just that one of the volumes turned up a bit louder. I know when I, I, I had anxiety in the last few years, it started before the pandemic, and I really um, sort of really got rid of it now. I mean, I still get stressed, yeah, but yeah. I mean, yeah. and I used, you know, sort of many, many things which I, I have spoken about on here. But what I would find is when I got into bed at night, I... I couldn't switch off because I felt that I was on alert mm -hmm. the entire time. And it was so frustrating because I could, annoying, I could feel it, you know, it's like I couldn't relax because I felt I had to be on alert. So that's obviously looking to protect yourself. Yeah, the hypervigilance. Uh, the hypervigilance. Mm. So yeah, I think that's what happened to me with anxiety. I was just hypervigilant all the time. Um, but it's, I mean, you cannot sleep if you're hypervigilant. No, oh, it's, it's, it's really difficult. And you have to do this thing and you say to yourself, it doesn't matter if I don't sleep. That's the way to get around it. Because if even and we're not sleep, sleeping, nothing yeah. makes you more tense. No, I know. But you have <laughs> to not sleep. I know it's, it's horrible, and it's kind of it's um, a lot of people with anxiety, and you know I've been through that myself. Well, the way I got around it was saying, like, okay, if you don't sleep, you don't sleep. You're going to feel awful tomorrow, but don't worry about it. You know, it's the way. Yes, I've had sleep. those conversations. Yeah, too, especially like like I'm filming the next morning if I'm doing yes. a film or oh, something I'm really good. important work-wise, yeah. and and you've got a really early call, I and mean, then you can be guaranteed not to sleep anyway, whether you're anxious or not. Yes, you know, you've got a five o'clock call, and uh, yeah, you've and got you really go, an A game. And you look, yes, yeah, it's one o'clock. Okay. I've got four hours. I've got four hours of sleep. Yeah, that's fine. I can, I can, I can do that. And two o'clock. Okay, three hours. Not so good. Not so good. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. I don't need any sleep. I'm going to be absolutely. <laughs> you have all these bad conversations. Yeah, you do. But you know, a lot of anxiety, anxiety is, is, you know, anxiety recovery is about how you talk to yourself. You've got to self parent yourself because if we say, oh, no, I mustn't feel anxious. I can't feel anxious. That would be a disaster. Then of course we're going to feel anxious. If we feel anxious. But even as I was saying that to myself, it didn't believe me. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I know I'm going to feel terrible, and yeah. I'm going to have huge bags under my eyes. Um, so, but it's tough, yeah. isn't it? But you, you, yeah, it, it's it's yeah. You have to keep practicing the self talk, even because you don't believe it. First of all, I don't think. But then after a while, you do. You can come back to a place. Yeah, and yeah. I so I suppose it is just 
getting your body somehow out of that fight or flight response. And yeah. that's where I think things like, and obviously your hypnotherapy helps with that, but also that's where breathing is so powerful. And that's what I, I mean, I used breathing, my, my breathing technique, which is on the, my YouTube channel. I mean, I used that morning, I used it every night before I went to bed. Sometimes I would do it over and over and over, but I would feel that physical change. And I think it would take me out of, yeah. Um, uh, flight mode and I would do it first thing in the morning and you know just used it I mean I didn't in the end I didn't have to use it that much and now to be honest I don't even use it every day I use it as I needed it but that was so powerful for getting out of that uh, flight response and and as you say how you talk to each other and I suppose mm -hmm. that's also mindfulness yeah. mindful thinking and, and awareness and like self-parenting i call it because yeah i think they're, obviously they're very similar but it's kind of that yeah that, that thing and it's so beautiful that you found something that helped you then you've got your tool yes. gets your route out and then you, yes. you can get more back into because we've got fight flight freeze and fall and then in the middle we've got like our window of tolerance yes and they, we're always looking to bring ourselves back into our window of tolerance a window of tolerance is the place where it's sort of phys physiologically and psychologically we feel well we rest well we digest well we make good decisions, we set boundaries, better decisions anyway. Um, and, you know, it sounds like what you did with your breathing technique took you back into your window of tolerance yeah. because, you know, we're in that super yes, adrenalized yes. state. It's horrible. Yes, Ad it's just awful. being adrenalized all the time. Yeah. 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 And it's funny, I always get this thing if I am feeling very stressed or, I've, you know, I've got real challenges. You know, we mm -hmm. all get real, you know, things happen in our lives and sometimes we have real challenges. And when things get really like that, I've always had, and I, I suppose it's because I am so focused on health, mm -hmm. and I'm very, I'm, I'm very in touch with my own body. Like my, my body is very sensitive to anything that isn't good, be it mental or physical, good, you know, yeah. or foods. So <clears throat> I always get this thing when there are challenges or mental challenges. I always want to eat very healthily and really take care of myself that way. Because I think it's very easy when you're not feeling too good to overindulge. Yeah, completely. Um, and you know, and, and it's not that I haven't done that. Yeah. I mean, of course I have. But um, if you really take care of yourself and you don't have tons of sugar, tons of caffeine, because caffeine yeah. can be terrible for anxiety, yeah. uh, you know, tons of wine or whatever, and you eat That's healthy. That's worst for anxiety. So, yeah, you, you, will feel, you will feel better until the next yeah, morning. Yeah, I discovered that. <laughs> yeah, I, disco killer. I discovered yeah. that. Yeah, so I... I I didn't have that for a while and it was very helpful. Yeah. Well, wow, it's a big, it's a big subject yeah. and that's so great that, um, you know, that, that you can help with that. Um, you yeah, know, that's I love absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So Zoe's um, at, uh, it's the MD clinic. Oh, it's um, oh, Zoe Clues and Associates. Associates. Yeah, I'm on Harley Street. So you can find her there if you're interested in um, having some hypnotherapy. Thank you so much Thank for you. talking Lovely to me. Thank you, to talk to you. One of my okay. favourite topics.